Hey everyone, Andy Robertson here with CQE Academy, and in today's video, I want to share an important topic called acceptance sampling. All right, let's head over to the computer and get started. All right, let's quickly review the agenda for today's lecture. So I'm going to start with a brief intro to acceptance sampling. What is the history, the background, sort of the approach here? And then we're going to go through a few different examples. So the most popular standard for acceptance sampling is ANSI Z1.4, which is the standard for attribute data acceptance sampling. We're going to go through one, two, three different examples so that I can walk you through some of the nuances of the standard. And then I'm going to talk about double and multiple sampling plans. So the very first example we do is actually going to be sample size code letter L with an AQL of 1.0. We're going to look at that same example, that same scenario, but for double sampling and multiple sampling. And so you can see how the sample size changes and become familiar with some of the benefits and the downsides to double and multiple sampling. All right, let's get into this. So acceptance sampling is a practice where we take a sample from a population and we test that sample and then we make a decision to either accept or reject that entire population based on the results of the sample. So this originated in the 1930s and it really became popular in the 1940s, especially during the war, when the US government, for example, was testing munitions to make sure that the quality of that product met their standards. In fact, the original military standards from the 1940s have morphed into what we call the ANSI Z1.4 and ANSI Z1.9 standard that we use today. And really it became the compromise between destructive testing or 100% testing and some sort of sampling process. Now, anytime we're sampling, anytime we're doing inferential statistics, there's always some risk that we might make the wrong decision. So in a future video, I'm gonna explain the risks of acceptance sampling. I'll talk you through the OC curve and help you understand what this curve means and how we measure producers and consumers risks. But just for now, understand that there is some risk in the acceptance sampling process that we could reject good material or accept bad material. All right, so let's get into this and talk about the ANSI Z1.4 standard. So I want to use an example to help you understand the standard. There's actually two tables here. The first one here on the left is called the sample size code letter table. And the table here on the right helps you translate your sample size code and your AQL into a sampling plan. So let's do this example. So we have a lot size of 8,000 pieces and an AQL of 1.0. So let's talk about what that sampling plan would look like. So the first thing you do is you have to come over here to your sample size code letter and you have to find your 8,000 pieces. So for example, it would fall into this category here and you come across to the right and the default level, the default sampling plan or the sample size code letter is associated with general inspection level two. So we're gonna stick with that today and our sample size code letter is L. And then we come over here to this other table and we find our sample size code letter and that tells us how many samples we have to pick. So we have to test 200 units from the 8,000 piece lot. Now we can pair that up with our AQL 1.0. So here we are at our AQL 1.0. By the way, AQL today stands for acceptance quality limit. Back in the original military standard, it stood for acceptable quality level. And that word acceptable quality level led to some serious misinterpretations around what AQL means. So the formal definition of AQL is the worst tolerable process average that is still considered acceptable. So this 1.0 AQL is the worst tolerable process average of defects that you would still consider to be acceptable. And the way this table works is you start with your AQL, you come down here to your sample size code letter, and what you find are two numbers, five and six, and these become your accept and your reject criteria. So when we take the 200 samples, if we find five or fewer defects, we can accept that entire lot. If we find six or more defects, we have to reject that entire lot. Does that make sense? And then when you're picking your AQL, it really has to be risk-based. So you have to think about the quality attribute that you're inspecting for, and you have to pick that worst tolerable process average for that defect, and it has to align with your overall risk management strategy. All right, so let's now change our example here a little bit to help you understand the nuances of the table. So now in this next example, we have a lot size of 200 with an AQL of 1.0. So our AQL isn't changing, our lot size is. 
We come over here to this sample size code letter table. We have to inspect sample size code letter G, which if we come over here is 32 pieces. We can then pair the sample size code letter G up with the AQL of 1.0. And what we find here is actually a downward arrow. And what this downward arrow means, and this is true for every downward arrow in the standard, is that we actually have to move down to the next sample size plan down here, which is actually sample size code letter H, sample size of 50, and an accept reject criteria of one and two. So of the 200 lots, we have to sample 50 of them. We'll reject the lot if we have two or more defects. We'll accept the lot if we have one or fewer defects. All right, let's go through another nuance here. All right, so our lot size is 30 and our AQL is 0 0.4. So again, we start over here at our sample size code letter table. We find our sample size code letter D. We come here to the plan. D translates into a sample size of eight. And we come over here to a 0 0.4 AQL. And what we find here is a downward arrow. So the way this downward arrow works again is we come all the way down to sample size code letter G, meaning that we have to sample 32 pieces. Now remember, our original population size is simply just 30, meaning we have to test every piece in this lot. And we only accept the lot if we find zero or fewer defects, and we reject the lot if we find one defect or more. All right, does that make sense? Let's do one more example here. So our lot size is 200,000 pieces, and we wanna pair that up with an AQL of 6.5. So again, everything starts over here on this table. We find our 200,000 piece sample size code letter to be P. We come down here, we see P. It corresponds with a sample size of 800 units. We pair that up with the AQL of 6.5. And essentially what we find is an up arrow, which means we have to travel all the way up. And our accept reject criteria is 21 and 22. And our sample size actually changes to code letter L. So of the 200,000 pieces in our population, we have to sample 200 units. And if we find 21 or fewer defects, we accept the lot, 22 or more, and we reject it. All right, does that make sense? Now let's move on to double sampling because I want to help you understand the pros and cons of double sampling. So we're gonna go back to that original example of a lot size of 8,000 with an AQL 1.0. This sample size code letter doesn't change. So we're still gonna find ourselves with sample size code letter L. But let's see what the double sampling plan looks like. So this double sampling table is obviously different than single. And let's go to our sample size code letter L. And what it says here is there's a first sample and a second sample. Now each of those samples have the same quantity of 125 a piece. And cumulatively, if we take both samples, we're gonna end up taking 250 samples. If you think back to single sampling, we were taking a single sample of 200 units. So if we end up taking both samples, we'll actually take more than the single sampling plan. But the beauty of double sampling is that oftentimes the quality of our product is so good or so bad that we can reject or accept the lot just based on the single sample. So again, here's that AQL of 1.0. Let's find that intersection between L and 1.0. And so when we take that first sample of 125 pieces, if we have two or fewer defects, we can accept the batch on the first sample. If we have five or more defects, it means the quality is really bad and we can reject the whole lot based on that first sample. If we have three defects or four defects, we have to take another sample. That's the second 125 pieces. And you'll notice here that the accept reject criteria for the second piece is six and seven. And this is cumulative. So let's say you have three rejects during the first sample, meaning we have to take a second sample. And then you have another three defects when you take the second sample, cumulatively you had six defects, which means you'd end up accepting that batch. The inverse of that is let's say you had four defects the first sample and four defects on the second sample, cumulatively now you had eight defects, meaning you'd have to reject that whole batch because you had more than seven defects. So that's double sampling. And like I said earlier, the benefits of double sampling is that oftentimes you can accept or reject the batch just based on the first sample, which over the long run, if you calculate the average number of samples that you take, is actually less than single sampling. The downside is that sometimes it can be difficult to administer. 
maybe you have to go out to your warehouse and take a sample and come back and go out to your warehouse and take a second sample. And because of some of those inefficiencies, double sampling doesn't always make sense for everyone. And then we can stretch this idea of double sampling all the way to multiple sampling. So a multiple sampling plan is simply just an extension of double sampling where we can take up to seven different samples. And each of these samples that we take has its own accept reject criteria. Now the example I'm showing you here is the multiple sampling plan for the sample size code letter L with an AQL of 1.0 because I want to show you the differences between single sampling, double sampling, and multiple sampling. So here we're going to take seven samples of 50 pieces, meaning cumulatively, if we completed the entire sampling plan, we would have a sample size of 350 pieces. Now if you think back to single sampling, that's 200, double sampling was 250, but again the logic of multiple sampling is still the same. We can oftentimes make accept or reject decisions early on in the process so that the average sampling that we take over time is actually greatly reduced. So let me explain how this works. So in this first sample, the accept number is actually NA, meaning we can't actually accept the batch on this first sample. What we can do is we can reject the batch on that first sample. So if the quality of that batch is so bad that we have four defects within 50 pieces, we can immediately reject the entire batch just on that first sample. Now it's in this second sample of 50 pieces where we could actually accept the batch if cumulatively between the first sample and the second sample, we had one or fewer defects. And then of course we can always reject the batch with five or more defects, but if we end up having two defects or three defects or four defects, we actually have to take the next sample. And so this could go on and on and on and on depending on the results that you get, all the way down to the final sample where we accept on nine and reject on 10. So this is that idea of multiple sampling. All right, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button so other people just like you can find this exact same content. And if you want to continue on your journey of becoming a CQE, hit that subscribe button so that as I publish more content, more tools and tricks and training material, that you get access to that stuff immediately and you can learn and you can grow. All right, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.